the rest of the story. You have heard the phrase animal magnetism. It was invented by an 18th century German doctor named Franz Anton. His early medical career was legitimate, MD from the University of Vienna, so forth. But then, then Franz started playing with magnets. For years he was convinced that magnets possessed healing power. So convinced was he that he had everything in his personal professional surroundings magnetized. Eating utensils and medical instruments, even the trees outside the window. Yes, Franz believed that you could magnetize trees, and he also kept a little pouch with a magnet in it around his neck. And whenever he encountered a particularly tough medical case, one that defied conventional cures, he would stroke the patient with a magnet. And what do you know? Some of them actually got better. Some of them actually got well. And eventually, Franz's last resort magnetism therapy became his treatment of first resort. One day, Franz came to a startling conclusion. The healing power was not in the magnets at all. It was in him. He personally, biologically, perhaps even supernaturally, possessed some strange sway over physical illness, and hence the term animal magnetism. He, Franz, was the animal. He traveled to Paris. He cured, I use that word advisedly, he cured more people than ever before, and through the force of his personal influence alone, he claimed that he was effecting these cures. People in Paris adored him. He became famous. He opened a treatment center. He organized group healing sessions. Patients were arranged in a circle in a softly lighted room with ethereal music playing quietly in the background. And Franz would greet them in a flowing lavender robe made of silk. And he would wave a magnetized wand, a magnetized wand, and he would speak reassuringly to the assembled, and he would pass his wand slowly over each of them, and he would place his hands on them. It was that last part, the part about placing his hands on them, that got Franz in trouble. Responsible medical doctors protested that he was seeking to arouse his female patients sexually, and, and that his so-called therapy was useless. Well, anyway, a major controversy erupted. On the commission appointed to investigate Franz was Benjamin Franklin. Among those defending the wand-wielding physician was Marie Antoinette. The critics won, and they ran Franz out of town. He died in obscurity three decades later. His medical cures we now know, and there were a great many, had nothing to do with metal or animal magnetism. They were the product of faith which Franz's patients had in him. And perhaps something else, for when ailing people came to Franz, to sit in the semi-darkness listening to soothing music, to hear the lulling monotone of his mellifluous voice, to watch the rhythmic waving of his not-so-magic wand, they, his patients, were participating without knowing it, without even Franz himself knowing it, they were participating in the yet-to-be-discovered psychotherapy of hypnotism, the unwitting and utterly accidental invention of a crackpot who died a nobody named Franz Anton Mesmer. Even today, when we are hypnotically fascinated with anything, we say we are mesmerized. Well... Now you know the rest of the story.